Hello everybody. Guys, it's Mr. Ronan up here. We are in Houston, Texas right now at the Caster Society Extravaganza Tournament. This is the second event uh, that they've hosted uh, live from their special Terra. It's gonna be a treat. Hope everyone enjoys. Stay tuned. Guys, we are in Houston, Texas today at the Castro Society's event. I have Michael here, AK Speed Lemon. It's ironic of events because when I first got into MetaZoo, Michael was interviewing me, and now I get the opportunity to interview him. He's actually at the event now doing commentary. I want him to be able to talk about the event and kind of explain, you know, the scenery we have here right now. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Michael? Yeah, no, I'm really excited to be here. This is the Castro Society Extravaganza Part Two. They're calling it. It's the uh, special cast society format they're calling it the Colorado Ski Lodge so basically how that works is they just have different terras different uh, fourth wall items active uh, than would normally be in a standard competitive environment and we are actually playing currently in a repurposed church uh, it's it's a really awesome event center they got some cool paintings outside a lot of original details in here including some uh, great stained glass windows, which is kind of ironic considering uh, how good light is, I believe, in this format and how many uh, stained glass tokens we're probably going to see in play. Uh, but like there. you said, it, it, is, uh, it is interesting to have the rules reversed a bit. You're right. Yeah, last time we talked, it was uh, you had just won your first tournament, and this time... Uh, well, I got second place in the last Cash Society Extravaganza. I decided to step back this time and do commentary, and now we're both, I guess, kind of on the outside looking in at all the Absolutely. awesome players here today. Absolutely. Guys, I want to show you all everything that is at these tournaments that you will get in these events. All right, so we have here the play mat that you get for participating in this event. The art here was done by Orion, um, and you can only get this map by playing in one of the Cash Society Extravaganzas, so you'll... Won't be able to get this one, but if you come out to the next extravaganza, you'll be able to get that one. Now, all of the players also receive two of the Terra pages that are relevant for the format. So as you can see, uh, they are stamped at the bottom with the Caster Society logo along with the uh, one for the format as well. And along with that, all players also receive an exclusive extravaganza pack. Now, you can only get these at the extravaganza. There are only 80 made, and every single card in it is stamped one of one. So, Logan, this is your pack here. Is, and I'm curious, because a lot of people ask, is there any incentives of, like, is there different, like, kind of hollows or anything, like, about the pack? So I know that Caster Society has several different stamps. These ones here, these fractal stamps, they do give you a discount for items at play packets and on Caster Society. I'm not sure if those are in the extravaganza packs or not, but they could be. Um, there are also just Caster Society packs in general with special cards. Um, those aren't here, uh, unfortunately, uh, but we do have these exclusive one-of-one -one extravaganza packs. Uh, if you'd like to go ahead yeah. and open it, we can see what you got. Did, yes, I believe you said... Go ahead. And we'll go ahead and just rip that open. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accidentally spoil it, because they put it in here. Actually, make sure. Okay, yes, they did put it in here face down. And uh, so, so, guys, you'll get it in here in the sleeve. And so this is Mark, and you can only uh, get these at the tournament. So, I'm noticing a bit of a bend, which makes me think bend. hollow. It's a that hollow. makes me think hollow. Ready? Flip it Let over. It. Let's go. Oh! oh! Nice. The Wilderness promo. promo with the Caster Society stamp. One of one. That's a good one to get. Beautiful artwork on that card as well. Wow. Guys, you got to come to these events. Exclusive items. You can only get these events. Not to mention the pricing. Yes. There, there's, there's, there's cash on the line. There's boxes on the line. There's glory on the line. And there's official uh, Caster Society placement medals, which look fantastic if you haven't seen them. Especially dangerous. Earth Force mid-range. It's not even... It's hard to tell at this it, point. It really is. We haven't even really... Yeah, he's scooping. Guys, we're in round two. Round two just came to an end. 
This gentleman here, go ahead and introduce the crowd. Who's your name? Hello, my name is Anthony Chartar. And where are you from? I'm from Louisville, Texas. Okay, okay, right down the street from me. Awesome. So tell everyone, you know, I know you just won the round two. You know, what did you play? What were the keys to victory? Uh, I was playing a uh, forest and rock hybrid deck. And I believe the keys to victory is using the information that we have out there available to come to the tournament prepared. So I knew that there's going to be a ton of water here today. I knew there's going to be a ton of lightning. So I made sure that my sideboard was equipped to fight those decks. Awesome, awesome. Anything you want to tell any, any new players that are coming into the game? Uh, definitely do not give up. This is a game that a uh, comeback is very possible, especially with new beginnings. Every deck has it. Just keep on trying. N uh, never give up. You never know. You can come back and clench a victory that you thought was a, a defeat. Awesome. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. I know you're chilling now. Let's keep it moving. Hopefully, see you at the next feature table. Right. Stay tuned. Unless he's playing for the double deck outs? Oh. Which would cause a dream. Guys, end of round three was crazy. I think this is the first time that I've seen a draw. A great match between these two individuals. I want them to introduce themselves, tell them what they were playing, and a hard fought battle on this. Uh, Tuffy, I'll leave it to you first. All right, well, my name's Tuffy Maggio. I'm from uh, Southern Oklahoma. And um, our our game two was, was pretty insane. The, um, basically, I, I had everything stabilized, but um, going uh, Chessy, lighting in a bottle, just got it for him, so. Yeah. Okay. Would you would you say there was any keys to like maybe like that edge that you had for a while before the draw? Um, knowing knowing how many threats the water deck plays, like Manta Ray and um, uh, Oklahoma Octopus are big ones. So once those were, he had an Oklahoma Octopus in play, and we, uh, I dealt with that. And he had a mana ray in play, but it was frog. So I wasn't really worried about anything except for the the chessy lighting in a bottle possibility. And I think he had three lighting in a bottles in the graveyard. So there's only two left with a, a few cards in his deck. So I, I just didn't play around that. And, okay. Yeah. And for all the new players, what would you tell them coming in the game as, as, a, as a seasoned player now? Um, play a lot. Learn, learn the uh, the traits and uh, uh, status effects. That's the biggest thing. Once you once you get those down, just you know, practice, practice, practice. Got it. I mean, practice doesn't make perfect, but perfect practice. Makes it sounds perfect. like we got to crawl before we walk, guys. Plain and simple. Congratulations on that. I, I want to hear about the comeback the, the, for the draw. Um, so I've been playing. I've been playing. Hey, water. Introduce yourself. I do oh, apologize. Oh, my Where you're from? My name's Antonio. Okay. I'm from Round Rock, Texas. Okay. Um, basically, I've been playing. Wa I played water all day today. And Tuffy's a great player. None of the games are easy. Um, you got to be patient, and you really have to know like what's in your what's in your spell book, and just play smart. Tuffy's calculated. He had me sweating in this chair, but he's super nice and fun. And uh, yeah, Mezzi's fun. I think I've been playing for maybe like a month and a half now. And for anyone that just wants to get into the game, um, just try it out. Just try it out. Maybe go to your local game shop. Maybe TTS, Tabletop Simulator, is a good way to start the game. Um, yeah, it's it fun. So fun you mean tell me you've been in this for a month and like you're now here playing with some top players. That's awesome. That's an awesome experience. I got to give credit to my friend Mateo who put me onto this game. He's not here today. But when you play good players, you become a better one. So that's where I am now. And what was to you in that standpoint? Because I believe you said you came back. So what, yeah. did, what was the comeback play? What was the keys to, you, to that draw? So basically, I, the, like for most of the game, all I had for like the second half of the game, I think I had a, had a Chessy, an Oklahoma Octopus, and a, a, a Charmed uh, Manta Ray. And so I saw, I knew that Tuffy had like maybe three or four cards at a time in his hand. He was playing Tidal Pool, which a lot of, I, I, that was the first time that I played a water deck that was playing a uh, Tidal Pool against. Because usually, I don't think, usually frog players won't play Tidal Pool. So that kind of caught me off guard, but it's just the slow play. I was trying to guess on what he had. I was holding like two lightning in a balls and a, and a smoky spirits. I was pulling water ore, which wasn't helping me. So at the end, Chessie was dealing a lot of damage. So lightning balls helped me and came through for that one. Got it, got it. Guys, thank you so much for this. Y'all stay tuned for the next round. Oh, that hand. Yeah, that so, hurts. Yeah. That hurts. Guys, it's the end of round four. I got here with me, Philip. Philip, tell everyone about the game. Tell us everyone where you're from, first and foremost. I'll leave it over to you, sir. I'm um, from uh, Arlington, Texas. Uh, 
Like, born and raised in East Texas, but moved up to Dallas for okay. Four. Been there for a decade. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay. So tell us about the game. Like, tell us about the keys to victory. Oh well, with that round, well, I mean, I'm running blue, and it's this like kind of the best deck, so it's really hard to break it up unless you're going as a really good player. So unfortunately, like this combos off, and I, I don't really think it's key to victory other than the deck's solid. Like, got I don't want to hype myself. Up. No, I get it. I get it. We got a lot of more rounds to go. Um, so I tell you what this. In this standpoint, with new people coming in the game, is there anything from someone that's becoming seasonal in the MetaZoo, you know, pro setting that you would want to share for anybody coming in? Test play and find something like you want to run and just keep playing it and find up all your matchups and how you beat those matchups. And if you have a losing matchup, maybe you stretch it up. Like it's not always, you don't have to always go with the deck, but you have to have options, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I thank you for your time. Y'all stay tuned. Damage into Frog, but Smokey Spear. Yeah. I was going to say, Antonio hasn't been able to get any attacks that, in for a while. G, 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 G. Casters, end of round five. I got Easton here. We all know. Congratulations on the win. Easton, if you could tell everybody, you know, your background, where you came from, and what brought you into MetaZoo, first and foremost. Okay. Uh, Easton Evans, born and raised in Waco, Texas. Uh, I reside now in Austin, Texas. Uh, I've been playing since October. Um, what really got me into the game was the nostalgia I felt, like saw whenever, interestingly enough, I saw an Instagram ad and saw, and I'm like, hey, this is re really reminiscent of other, other card games and then ended up getting into it. Awesome, awesome. So I know this was kind of, it went to game three. Mm -hmm. So what to you with that matchup with keys to victory for you? Uh, I think it was the patience, especially in the, the Frogman matchup. It's really calculating who has the most outs to getting rid of Frogman. And I think in that case, I had a couple more uh, tricks up my sleeve to get rid of Frogs or at least get them to come back. So that, that was the key. Something I haven't asked today, but is there anything that has shocked you? Anything that caught you off guard today? Um, the amount of artifacts being played. Um, I thought that in this format, because land tax can swing, they hit you for 80, that people would stay away from artifacts. But it seems like artifacts are being played and they can really turn the table just because you can ramp up so quickly, so. Okay, and last thing, for all the new players that are coming in here, you know from you and I both from that YouTube video we did, what are things that you would tell new players that are coming to the game to do, getting ready to be, compete for this tournament? Oh. Um, study up, be patient, um, be knowledgeable. There's three sets of cards. There's a lot of cards that the synergies are completely different, um, but most importantly, be, be a good and nice player. I think that it's oftentimes uh, overlooked just because this is our competitive atmosphere, but uh, be nice. There's a lot of new players, a lot of people who want to get into card games or found this as a, 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 a escape or a hobby, uh, and you don't want to turn people away from it. So that's Absolutely. It. All right, guys, stay tuned for the next round. Comes down, swinging on into the frog, smoky anti-potion, and just the answers have been there for everything. Caster, this is round six, the final round. You have to win to get in. This gentleman right here went 2-0 in the final round, on round six. Introduce yourself, tell everyone where you're from. I know he's from the H-Town, but tell everyone where you're from and then tell them a little bit about where you started in this game and where you are now. Oh, for sure. Hands down, before anything, Logan, like the coverage you got, man, amazing. I appreciate it, I gotta it, give you that first. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, my name is Zeke. Um, local to the Houston area, but I'm actually from South Florida, for anybody uh, to get that out there. And, um, yeah, man, like that went in to get in was, was crazy, you know. I mean, that game one, I did some miscalculations, but after winning, I came strong in game two with some side decking. And uh, yeah, man, it's been, a, it's been a good run. Like, I was a win to get in. So get I did in. see the matchup was water versus lighting, which my first event I ever won, that was the matchup for me. Oh, yeah. uh, I know I inspired a lot of people to kind of go out there and, and, and really attack lightning. But what were the keys of victory for you? So some of the key victories for me were a lot of people when you play metazoo it's they tend to just drop cards freely it's sometimes just a chess match you got to drop cards when you see certain cards so if you were paying attention in games one i was responding more as opposed to just dropping certain cards as well in game two side decking into noticing that his items were missing the radio which led metal man to come in on the field freely which uh, greatly enhances that fleet onto like even the side decking when i did the anti-potion yes. which lets all those go off Yes, absolutely. So last thing, for new players that are coming into the game, what are some keys to help them get started that you, you know, you've learned along the way that you can pass along? Uh, hands down, get familiar with the cards. Get familiar with uh, 
not only just the top cards, but even some of the cards that are like under the table that can get you a little bit ahead in some in some areas. Not a lot of players are playing some cards that are really good, and it's just learning matchups as well, uh, knowing what cards can counter what cards and and timing on those windows. Like you got to know that if you drop a card, uh, if you drop a beastie on a frog, it's more likely they're gonna lightning bottle and they may do that. So you got to know that you may have two anti potions in your hand to, to counter things like that. But get familiar with the cards, get familiar with the auras, the aura types, and what like also the better cards in each aura type because each aura type has specific like specific spells that are very very strong for each aura type that you uh, awesome. want to get familiar with. Well, look, good luck in top eight. I wish you it. best. Thank you. Stay tuned, guys. Masters, collectors, enthusiasts. I know the judges never really get the the shame, or sorry, shame, the fame that they deserve. But I want to shout out to Bats. Everyone knows Bats. Uh, appreciate him being the MZO. This mm -hmm. tournament's been phenomenal. Everyone had a great time. But from your point of view, from the last one that y'all hosted to now, Cash Study, you know, look how much has grown. But I want to get your point of view of that. Like, how was today? Uh, today was pretty awesome. There's a there's a good turnout. I think we had uh, 56 people that played. Um, people coming from all over to to Houston in this really cool church venue. <laughs> yeah, very unique. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good time. Um, I'm glad uh, that we have such a great community that will just come and, you know, uh, play and participate and have fun with us. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about the diversity of decks now? It's not all just one type right now. Like you saw yeah. the top eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not all water, which is cool. <laughs> but uh, no, there's a lot of people playing Cosmic today, which I love. Um, yeah, it's been pretty diverse. I think the uh, Wilderness meta is pretty undefined still. But I mean, um, our uh, our format does use the special rules, uh, starting terrors and stuff like that. So maybe not indicative of like what we'll see in Dallas or anything, but eh, I guess we'll see. I think it's good to spice it up. And I think yeah. I did a phenomenal job. Thank uh, you. I look forward to the top eight. Mm -hmm. Is there any special rules for top eight today or anything like that, a time or anything? Um, I think, well, we're on a time crunch today, so I think it'll just be the standard 50 minutes. If we can do it, maybe not have time for first and second. Um, it just depends on how quick we can get everything uh, packed out of here, but it'll it'll just be like normal rounds, 50 minute rounds. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Well, I will let you get back to it. I appreciate all that you've done today. Guys, top eight is going, stay tuned. So Henry, how did it go today? How was the cash size tournament from the last time to now? You've been in both of them. Yeah. What did you see? What did you enjoy? What did you feel like caught you off guard? Oh, yeah. Um, I went 4 2, got 13th place. I played water and I played against two fire decks that were pretty cool. Uh, a lightning B deck or the Hornet deck, go fast. It beat me because it New Year's me, but you know, it was rough, but good deck. It was cool, it was fast, and top aided. What did you enjoy today? What was something like you were just like, that was that was slick? Um, playing Dylan, I got him down. He got me down to like 50, and then I came back and won. He was Always at a thousand, good. so like you know, it's how fun that is. Oh, clip that. Yeah. Dylan Kai. Just no, kidding. no, B. 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 Oh, okay, my bad. Scratch. All right. All right, brother. I'll see you at the next event. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Fun. Dylan, DFW group. Yeah. Brother, how was the cash side tournament in Houston? Like, how was it? Like, what did you enjoy compared to the first one? You know, we've been playing for what? Man, almost almost a year, almost. Yeah, it's been almost a year. <laughs> so, how, how was the event today? So, this one was really my first cash side uh, event uh -huh. because the first one was in Austin. I couldn't make it. Uh huh. But this one, I, I was like, I had to make it. I had to be here. I had to face the new meta. I had to burn the hard way <laughs> learn burn and learn learn and learn. <laughs> burn and learn the hard way yeah uh it was great a lot of new people were moving booty i like that <laughs> a lot of new players no they're alive but a lot of people yeah. were doing really well yeah man <laughs> what was like a thing that, that caught you off guard today anything uh, crazy today the only thing that got me was water so that wasn't the surprise <laughs> the one that got me was the, the light players really the okay. light players and then where was just a moment where you like you were pivoted and like you you did something slick and you came oh, back? I got I got a good one for I you guys. I want to hear it. <laughs> there was six beasties on the, my field. Uh, five of them were sleeping. I had a chessy, and then five lightning and bottles per game. <laughs> I saved it for the last turn. That's the only way to get out of it. I, I secured the dub at the end. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, all right, brother. Look, well, look forward to seeing you in Caster awesome Side Tournament. I'm oh, sorry, in the in the extra Caster Cup. Yeah. Everyone, stay tuned. See you guys. guys being y'all's first cash society tournament, I want to get y'all's experience. You know, what did y'all plays? What did you gain from this event? And what are you looking for going forward? So I'll start with you. What's your name? I'm Robert. Robert. So tell um, the people about the tournament. 
Um, but I loved it. Uh, knowing that this is like, like my first Caster Society, um, there was one previously, but I couldn't get there. But coming to this, being around everybody, the experience, everything that uh, that I took back from it, uh, being a water player and going forward with what my ideas were mixed with a lot of other people's, you know, we got to collaborate and find out exactly what, what works, what doesn't work. So that, you know, that boosts my knowledge, you know, and helps me as a player in general. So that way I can get prepared for the caster club. Okay. Um, I got, I placed 14. Okay. So, uh, I didn't do, I didn't do too bad. I did. Out of 52 players, yeah, actually. That's I did good. I a lot player, a lot better than I thought I was going to do. But besides that, I'm just going to take this information and go back home get back to grinding and we're and excited with what, what we had today right exactly good 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 and so mike yeah <laughs> you haven't played i mean tell me your story a little bit what you were telling me earlier you haven't played in how long any tcgs oh uh, it's probably been at least 10 15 years i would say i used to be a ex-professional Yu-Gi-Oh player and i was actually pretty good at it but kind of took a break because you know you grow up and kind of life happens right yeah so tell me what you think about metazoo like I know you said your friends brought you into this game and everything, but what do you what do you like about it compared to other TCGs? I'm actually really enjoying just like the atmosphere of it, and like the game itself seems really you know fluid and like it flows very well. It seems like a lot of comeback potential, you know. Even though there's a few decks that are really strong compared to others, but it seems like the meta is like not really defined yet. It's more like a so, big wave, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of decks that have so much potential, and it, you don't see the same deck every time. Even there, like I said, there's a few decks that are dominant, but it gives you a chance to pretty much play what you want to play, and you can still do well. Perfect, perfect. Guys, look forward for the next one. Y'all stay tuned.